welcome in, all you O-Niners, PTHers, junior private detectives, fighting Fitzpatricks, bad parents, and ahoy mateys to Life on Mars, the Veronica Mars Rewatch podcast where we go through episode by episode. I'm Brenton. And I'm Emily. And we're talking about, you guessed it, season two, episode eight, Ahoy Mateys. Um, that was beautiful. Thank you. Uh-huh. I did not break into giggles during it. I'm very <laughs> proud of myself. Oh, well, I'm also proud of you. It's hard, you know? Sometimes you get the giggles and you can't stop. When the gigs start coming, they don't stop coming. Mm-hmm. It's very Smash Mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you think? Um. So, I... Um, <laughs> nothing going on inside. Yeah. Um, oh, God, she's looking at her notes an awful lot. <laughs> Just calm down. She can do the speech. <laughs> Can't even read my own handwriting. It's not like I'm checking them. Um, I know I was thinking about the Fitzpatrick's and it just kind of like, oh, yeah, steamrolled. Um, mm-hmm. just because you know, like I was raised with a touch of the Irish culture. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't an impression, it was just how the sentence <laughs> formed in my head. <laughs> Okay. I would like you to know that that was all channeled. None of that was me. Your um, ancestors? Ew, I, they're not mine. I don't. I think I only have a little bit of Irish in in me. Mm. Mostly Scottish, Scottish and Port- right. Portuguese. Just a touch. Just a touch. A touch of the Irish. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, like you know, like Dad's family's so white. Like it doesn't, you know. I, How white are they? Uh, Irish English, basically. If it was part of the the uk ish area mm-hmm. potatoes but then the other half is straight up portuguese so you know it's the important half yeah i mean totally. don't worry i love both halves but <laughs> i know y'all were worried but <laughs> my very... stepfather is very irish and um i was like he would be very offended by the fighting fitzpatrick's i feel they're they're giving him a bad name but they're not even particularly irish in terms of like irish caricature it's just like they're a large family, but they don't have like Boston accents or anything like that. It's just like, oh no, they're just scum, like absolute scumbags. Yeah. And they uh, are the tattoo clovers. Yeah. Um, when my grandmother was dying, <laughs> so weird way to start oh my. this. <laughs> she had had a stroke, and like my grandmother had her wits with her until the end. She was like ninety-seven, like just like a, a badass motherfucker. Um. Mm-hmm. And at the very end after her stroke, I, the last time I saw her, she wasn't really talking, but like probably like a week before that, she told my mother that we were all Irish. She is Portuguese. She's a hundred percent, like was born in the Azores Portuguese, but grew up in, you know, you know, in the Boston area ish in Massachusetts and then came to California to the Central Valley. God, I don't know why. (laughs) Um, I'm like, how did you pick? (laughs) <laughs> through a dart of California. That's where the train let off. I know. It's supposed to why. Um, but she decided we were Irish and um it just like really like this episode just triggered like me like giggling uncontrollably about, about that. About Irish. I was just like, of course we're Irish. Like why right. not? <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the family's like, no, we're Portuguese and like so proud of it. And I'm like, yeah, sure, like let's go with right. it. <laughs> just at the end, the secret. But I think it's because she loved my stepfather more than the rest of us, and he's Irish. <laughs> We're going with him now. <laughs> Only when she knew towards the end. Take down all our... Um... Couldn't remember her own kids. Knew my stepfather. Yeah. Look, there's Jim. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Jim. Just fucking mm-hmm. Jim. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so... um. And I kept thinking about how the Fitzpatrick's... Weevil, a couple, a couple episodes ago, was like, yeah... They're um, Irish Catholics. You put one in jail, there's three more at home or whatever. Uh-huh, like, yeah, uh-huh. I was like, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this, I think the the difference between um, the Fitzpatrick's and uh, Weevil's crew makes me realize it's like, oh, Weevil's gang, quote unquote, is not really a gang. They're really just a writing club um, <laughs> that happen to participate in violence from time to time. And the Fitzpatrick's are a gang. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they're all, and Weevil's club is really only labeled a gang. Because, because of uh, you know they're brown and they uh, participate in violence from time to time. The color of their skin. Yep, they are really just a writing club because they don't even uh, sell drugs nope. until well, you know, not to step on anything, but um, the, you know, the under Weevil's rule, they do not want to sell. They don't sell drugs in the community. Yeah, um, 
And it shows... Um, so I was raised Catholic, but like Portuguese Catholic. Mm-hmm. Like the, the Catholic church I went to literally had a mass in Portuguese. And then the one on the other side of town had a mass in Spanish. But like... I never really thought about like Irish Catholics. Mm-hmm. Like we were just Catholic. Right. And like our Catholicism was a lot more like Weevils. Like when he talks about like his religion mm-hmm. versus like the Fitzpatrick's who are, you know, balancing like their quote unquote, you know, like like their identity around it, but like they're like a, a negative gang or like a <laughs> like they do bad things. Uh huh. Yeah. I'm like, oh huh. a negative gang. A negative gang. I'm only part of the positive gang Um, that's on the posters I put up at school. (laughs) It's like the the, the little kid and the meme with the glasses and the hat. (laughs) Yep. Yep. That was you. Yep. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, But yeah. Yeah. um, It just made me, it made me laugh. Yeah. Um, The whole situation is just, I'm like, oh, look at that. Systemic racism. (laughs) Exactly. Uh-huh. But I, I think the Fitzpatrick's version of it is much more of a, a, a Boston ver- version. I don't know. Of Irish Catholicism. Well, Irish Catholicism. So then I'm like, well, when my family was in Boston, mm-hmm. were they like chilling with the Irish Catholics or were they like in their own group? Probably their own group. And then like, were there different churches? Like I need to, now Probably. we need to go to Boston. <laughs> to go and- on a church tour. Well, I just I need to do a pilgrimage of my grandmother's life through the United States. Right, we do it backwards. We hop on the train, then we from Boston we get back on the boat. Can you imagine taking a train? I mean, we're going to we're going to take yeah. a train across country because I mm-hmm. think that's really fucking fun. Yeah, but like you literally are moving. Yeah, like you moved your life from the East Coast to the West Coast. Totally. Like you just got on a train at one end of the nation and you got off at the other. Right, and she said bye bye. Did yeah. she ever go back? I don't think so. Yeah, that's and crazy. She never went back to the Azores either mm-hmm. because, you know, it's a little far and a little yeah. expensive. Totally. But There's that no... was always my goal as a kid. I was going to get rich enough to take Granny to the Azores. Mm. Bitch had to die. <laughs> <laughs> didn't let me take her. I was this close to being financially stable when I'm she sure left. she went with your team, Mary. Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess so, you know. Uh-huh. My aunt is haunted by her and that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> Granny haunts us all <laughs> in a loving way. <laughs> um, but you know, the rest of the family didn't get to harbor her secrets like I did. No, despite uh-uh. shakers. Yeah, that's good. Uh-huh. Good stuff. Good stuff. That woman made her own rules. Yeah, totally. 100%. We could all take a a little lesson out of the Portuguese Catholic book, not the Irish Catholic. You can keep your superstitions <laughs> and your your fear of the evil eye and your Jesus. <laughs> Got it. We'll hold on to it. And um, make your own rules. Yeah. We'll feel guilty about it. We didn't really do a lot of the guilt. Like, the church did the guilt Catholicism, but, like, in our family, we didn't. You know mm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. We had a lot of babies before weddings and <laughs> um, alcohol abuse. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, back to the Fitzpatrick's. I will say before, like, you know how they do the flashbacks at the beginning? Yeah. I knew what episode this was going to be from the flashbacks. Really? Because I'm like, they're all Weevil related. And like, when we bring Weevil's plot back in, they do every flashback they've had of Weevil for the last like 20 20 episodes. I I misunderstood what you meant by flashbacks. I was thinking the Meg ones. Oh, no, no. Like the ones at the very beginning before it even starts. Like previously on Veronica Mars. Yeah, the recap. Okay. But it's not the recap from like... Like, you know your plot is too drawn out. When you're not pulling from the last episode, you're pulling from, like, the last 15. Yeah, totally. And it's, like, a half a sentence here, Uh a half a thought here. Remember when Weevil said this? Yeah, that was the cable MO. And you, even with, like, Game of Thrones, you'd watch the recaps, and it's like, oh, this person's finally coming back. Remember them? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's not I have no idea what the fuck is going on in Game of Thrones. <laughs> to this day, I'm still not sure what happened. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you live a, a blessed life. I mean, we watched it. I just yeah, I know. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I'm that, gonna, la- that last season's awful. The only good part is Arya's plot. Mm-hmm. Um, but this girl has a name, and it's Meg. <laughs> That's where we start. <laughs> smooth <laughs> yep <laughs> great transition um we start with duncan having a weird fucking dream of meg yeah 
where she's like, you're the only one who could save me, mm-hmm. which is just In like her virginal whites with the cross. Yeah. And it's just like all white everywhere. Like, you know, very dreamy. And then you've got Veronica in her black. And yeah. Her fishnets. And I got, and I got studs and a, a, a choker. Yeah. And she's using her gossip girl voice. <laughs> Did you notice that? Like no. her voice is different in that part. I wouldn't have noticed. In the that. dream, it's the gossip girl voice. It's very mm. much like the um, XOXO like, XO Veronica. Well, it's the dark Veronica. So it's right. like, oh, you like what do you what do you want with her? Mm-hmm. Do you think she's worth it? <laughs> Let her go. XOXO gossip girl. I hate, like never got very far on that show, but let me tell you, it is a fucking dark hole. Mm-hmm. It seems like it. There's a lot going on there. Mm-hmm. We couldn't do a Gossip Girl rewatch podcast. I would get overwhelmed. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so Veronica is in the dream and she's like, "Quit pining over Meg in the mm-hmm. dream." And I'm like, "Yeah, quit pining over Meg." Yeah, you <laughs> probably should. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you get back with Veronica if you were gonna pine over Meg? Like, just fucking stay with Meg. Right. It's it's the. Uh, I think we're supposed to um, take this as um, guilt. Yeah. Well, and so then it alludes to the fact for like, multiple th- reasons, like that Duncan and Meg had sex, basically, because like it's like a, um, like the idea of him making her virginal is like a probably a foreshadowing piece mm. for later. Mm-hmm. But um. I'm like, that doesn't seem like Meg's character. Like, they were only dating for, like, maybe a couple months. Because it was like, they right. started dating towards the end of season one. And then Veronica and Duncan got together over summer. Right. Because they had broken up by the time, um, you know, once he beat up the car. Yeah. They broke up then. So it mm-hmm. had to have been before Veronica and Logan started really dating. Because yeah. that was when that happened. Uh huh. So, like... I, like, the timeline is very confusing. Dude, yeah. Hey, maybe Meg was on an accelerated path. She could have not been a, a virgin before. Um, Duncan? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just, like, the way they've written her character is that she is, you know, very good. Right. Very chaste, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so it's interesting. Um, and it makes you feel like Duncan feels guilty for having been with her. Which is why I'm like, ooh, like I think they're playing with the like the virginity concept of like, you know, it was something she gave to him and he betrayed her. Like it, mm, it feels very mm-hmm. unempowering for Meg, which yeah. is stupid because virginity is just a concept. Totally. Um, yeah. Uh, it is a construct to keep women from enjoying themselves. Totally. We are in um, Duncan's brain. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, his guilt is hanging out there. Totally. Exactly. Well, and also, like, well-adjusted Duncan's really shown his true colors, isn't he? Yeah, it? I know. I was going to say, it uh, really falls apart this episode. And then, In the background. Yeah, so Duncan's having this weird fucking dream. Yeah. and Veronica- Twitching on the couch, running. <laughs> Barking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Veronica and Logan, because Logan lives with Duncan mm-hmm. in their suite in the Neptune Grand together. Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. Nope. Just can't get a room. Apparently. Uh, can't it's all get booked his own up. room. Yeah. yeah. Um and um it's Mr. Logan, I'm only nice when you can help me, Eccles. Mm-hmm. Um, As Veronica calls out. Um and he's telling her she needs to get all these things done and is being mean to her and she's like, Oh, is it an even numbered day? Because you're so much nicer on the odd numbered. Mm-hmm. Um, which I love. Um, but Duncan wakes up, sees them talking, looks grumpy, and then goes to bed in his bed and like doesn't say anything. No, I don't even think we get. Do we get a shot of Duncan? I think like yeah, he like gets up and like is walking out in the background, kind of. Oh, and, like, okay. Like, moves back over to them, but like you don't even see him leave all the way. Um, and so Logan's asking Veronica to keep looking into why he is being framed with killing. Felix. Felix. Um, and um, Duncan goes into the bedroom and hides a weird note in the dresser drawer. <laughs> yeah, I know. I put, I'm like, no, Duncan, that's the most obvious spot. <laughs> she's going to find it in an instant. Yeah, or like, yeah, it's like, what the fuck? You date a snoop. Like, she's a snooper. It's fine. Right. Like, uh-huh. some of us are snoopers. <laughs> One of my favorite things in Amy Poehler's book. There are dozens of us. <laughs> yes, please. Is she's like, in her book, she's like, yeah, I um, I love going through people's bathroom cabinets and seeing what they have. 
she's like, if I, if I come to your house, I'm going to look in your medicine cabinet. <laughs> and I was like, I respect that. Like, there's no secrets in my medicine cabinet. No. But like, uh-uh. I love seeing what people keep in their house too. <laughs> like, why else do we all watch like house tours or cribs or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> for the medicine cabinet what no, are their prescriptions like, like the things in general people it's just because the bathroom's a closed space so it's like somewhere you can snoop without getting caught <laughs> but i can just imagine on a house hunter is just like here's the bathroom it's all look at these countertops they're amazing look at this clawfoot bathtub that we brought in it was imported from italy and inside here's my arthritis medicine i also have some painkillers <laughs> and my allergy medicine oh my nose it just gets so itchy Here's some perks. <laughs> exactly. It's prescription, guys. I had I messed up my knee in an accident. Um, well, putting the clawfoot bathtub in. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled. I pulled my back. Um, but yeah, I um, I um, I always appreciate that, and also every time someone hides something in a place, I'm just like Veronica's gonna find it. Yeah, totally. But she doesn't mm-hmm. so far. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Logan and Veronica, co- or Logan comes to the conclusion that this guy is probably running drugs because um, just like his pediatrician got wrecked up on charges for this. Yes, yes. The the plastic surgeon that... Yes. Uh, Dr. Griffiths. Yeah, I also, I love that his pediatrician got... <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, this kid has received no appropriate care his entire life. <laughs> like, know. his fucking doctor... <laughs> Uh, I was just thinking this, like, doctor, like, smuggling out, like, large quantities of children's Sudafed. <laughs> got enough Benadryl to put down yeah. a horse. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. We, we've got to hook up. In a, he's a pediatrician that can get us all the baby Tylenol we can, <laughs> we can get. Um, one of the times I was hospitalized for um, eating peanuts before we knew I was allergic to peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> so... I was making felt stockings with my auntie, my great auntie, and I was like seven or eight, and Mm -hmm. I got a little felt in my eye, and I kept rubbing it, and all of a sudden, my eye was like the size of my face. Right. And um, I had also been eating, I ate an M&M out of this candy bar bowl at Granny's house, because Granny always had like candy out in like the glass bowls, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was a peanut- Best houses. Peanut M&M, we assume now. Right. In retrospect, we- That was probably just mixed in. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I was fucking like- five seven like somewhere in there it was like close to christmas and i was little i only remember making the stockings and then getting yelled at because they're like you must have touched your eye with the felt and i'm like i don't feel like this is my fault I know. <laughs> god yep but you know what i mean like as a kid you just like every time someone's like what happened you're like oh god what did i do exactly i didn't do anything and so then i went to the er and <laughs> oh, just the best. <laughs> they dilated my eyes and they stuck this like weird eye drops and stuff in it, you know, to dilate them. And as a kid, I was like, this is kind of fucking weird and kind of cool. And um, they gave me a bunch of Benadryl because they noticed I was like swelling. And they were like, hmm, probably something weird going on there. Maybe she's allergic to felt. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Maybe. I don't know why they didn't do an allergy test on site, but it was the 90s. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is a felt infection for sure. <laughs> right. You let her around the stockings? We see a million kids come in here during Christmas. We're just making them. We're just making fun kid stockings. Yeah. Um, and um, they kept giving me Benadryl, and it wasn't going down, and they like kept giving me more Benadryl, and it was like middle of the night. Like, <laughs> Stop you know, faking. Like, like it's like 12 p.m. And they, or 12 a.m., and they're like still giving me Benadryl, and the doctor comes in, and he looks at my mom and I just remember because I was sitting on the table like swinging my legs just like chilling. Oh, she's still awake. And he was like, why is she still awake? We gave her enough Benadryl to put down a horse and because of the Benadryl, I thought that was fucking hilarious. Maybe. Yeah. And as a kid, you're just like, oh. And so then I was like, I would find that hilarious now. Yeah. I was like, is there something wrong with me? It's like, no, we've heard about your family and this like high tolerance of yours. But I died laughing because I didn't go like, get the extra strength. It took another year or two to find out that I was allergic to peanut butter. But... I thought you meant to fi- for the Benadryl to finally hit you. <laughs> yeah, it slept for a week. <laughs> All of a sudden, just at school and just collapsed. <laughs> just went down for a nap and didn't get back up for seven days. <laughs> It's like there's that really scary thing that, that I read an article about in like college about this girl that would just like f- like she was narcoleptic and would mm. just like fall asleep for like weeks at a time. Oh my god, that's so scary. And I'm like, good god, like I just what like 
like do you do you dream when you sleep for that long or is it like a coma right but like a self-induced coma you know what i mean versus like a medical coma. Okay. like a medical coma yeah. i know you don't dream right but like when you're yeah, I don't know. That's bananas. It's scary. Yeah. Anyway, back yeah. to Meg. <laughs> it's not as it's not as fun as Rat Race made it seem. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, oh, so then we go to school. Yeah, and I was gonna... Lucas Gabriel, <laughs> an actor, actor, if mm-hmm. you will. Yeah. He is um he plays Ryan in high school musicals one through three, four. I don't know how many there are. Um he also is I in believe there's the last Halloween Town movie that was on Disney, so the one where they replaced Marnie with a different girl. It was actually still a pretty good movie, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. It's like they go to college. It's you know. Yeah. He's in that one. Um he he was, you know, he's an old hat at Disney for a while. Yeah. Um he performs my favorite scene in high school musical too, which when going into it, I was yeah. like, this is my favorite scene. Well, um, to put some context, this is about um say six months before his uh debut okay. in the first one. High school musical one. Yeah. And so in about eighteen months ish away from the most uh homoerotic baseball scene you'll ever see. <laughs> it is He can't dance or no, he uh He does dance. He does so, dance, but um Corbin Blue does not dance. Who is um? What's his name in it? Um, yeah, got it. Zeke is the one that makes the creme brulee in the first one. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, no help. But um, he um he comes up to Weevil in his little car. He is now playing a character called something else. Not Ryan. It's something, no, but it's not. it's another like white dude name. Mm-hmm. There's another Ryan later in this episode. Yes, but unrelated. But, um, because in the early 2000s, let me tell you, you were named Ryan, Michael, Chad, mm-hmm. Logan. Yep. And then something maybe like like Duncan's like different. You know yeah, what I mean? Ooh, Duncan, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, so so he shows up. He drives up in his little car. And he's like, where's my drugs, Weevil? But he doesn't know Weevil's name. No. He's just like, hey, you, Mexican guy with the motorcycle, where's my drugs? Uh-huh. And he's like, what? Paid you all that money. And he's like, I paid all that money. And he's like, who, like, what did he look like? I bet you can't describe what the guy who you actually bought it from looks like. And so Weevil's wheels are turning because his boys don't sell drugs under his Mm-mm. watch. They're a writing club. They're a writing club. This is a group of young men that have mm-hmm. an extracurricular hobby of mm-hmm. riding motorcycles. Exactly. They're going to put it on their applications. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I was in a leadership position uh, at the PCHers, the Pacific Coast Highway Biking Club. Biking club? Yeah, I guess that's okay. Riding club? Yeah. <laughs> Motorcycle <sounds> coalition. Like... <laughs> write his resume yeah there you go now we need to clean up this language a little yeah, bit yeah. it sounds like you were riding horses yeah 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 motorcycle um or um yeah motorcycle club yeah i like coalition better though coalition. We'll, we'll stick with that um and he's just i mean so this character played by lucas cabrillo is just a fucking racist yep absolutely. unlike in high school musical 2 when he dances with corbin blue mm-hmm. and they fall in love. Yeah, and they switch clothes. They do switch clothes. Uh huh. Yeah. That is the, the thing. That, like, just, even, what happened in between this baseball game where they don't dance? Like, did and like, did the actors in that scene were they like, oh, is this something that we're like, like, like was this planned? Did we do this for fun? Right. Is this part of the, the script? Like, because mm-hmm. they definitely yeah fell in love. Uh huh. Totally. And I, um, I'm here for it because mm-hmm. Corbin Blue is the best fucking dancer in that series, and totally. Lucas Gabriel is probably a close second. Because mm-hmm. you know who's not number one in that series? <laughs> Mister Pouts across a golf course, Zac know. Efron. I was gonna say it's a pretty convincing um, trot across the course. Strut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is great, isn't it? It is. It's a. It's a really good scene. It's a close second to the baseball. I honestly think High School Musical 2 is better than High School Musical 1. Yeah, oh, 100%. It I, is? I, I, as uh, someone that you showed this to less than a year ago, both of them. Um, we watched one like a couple, maybe like a month ago. Two's been longer than that. 
I don't know, you know, time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, still, uh, I remember two way more than I do one. Yeah. And yeah. It is, yeah, it's much better. I mean, it's a, it's a great film. Yeah, there's a reason they pulled the songs on TikTok from two and not one. Well, and I always, always, this is a very big tangent, but I think it's important. I will always <laughs> side with Sharpay mm. because these kids fucking showed up. She worked hard to be in a leadership position. And then these kids showed up and took her roles. Oh, and, in, in one? Mm-hmm. And then they don't, you know, they don't abide by the rules of the club per se. And they get to have everything. And she was not allowed to have it all. Hmm. And so I get it. I get Sharpay. Mm-hmm. You understand why she's I don't upset. always defend her actions. Totally. But you under, you get, she's coming from a place of... Uh... I understand her... Um, her intentions but i also they could have written that character to be so much more powerful yeah of course she's supposed to be just nakedly like like well and just like oh like i want to steal the boy versus like wouldn't it be cool if she just like wanted to be powerful because i just wants the part that's the first one i feel like where it's like she just wants to be powerful i'm Mm -hmm. like yes bitch um big fan of sharpay um but anyway so weevil's wheels are turning Mm mm-hmm um and then do we just go back to the mars investigation yes so keith is meeting with a family it's a Mm -hmm. family of marcos who was on the bus marcos oliveras yes um and i hate the way keith says oliveras we always said it oliveras not Mm. oliveras oliveras yeah i'm like what is this name you know he's he's white (laughs) Isn't the actor's name Enrique? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Keith is. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Enrico, I think he's Italian. Is he? Yeah. I have no idea. I. Uh, yeah, I go all the way back to episode zero as I described it. <laughs> <laughs> been a bit. It's been a while. Uh, uh, yes. That yeah. Okay. Very so, stained. <laughs> just like our memories. Uh huh. Yeah, and that concert Veronica was trying to get to. Uh huh. Um. So. Marcos's dad is like, someone's breaking into our house and leaving little bus toys in the house. Yeah, bananas. They're also leaving recordings of our son's voice and things that smell like his cologne yeah. in the house. Intense, intense, <laughs> intense harassment. Yes. Um, and this family did not accept the settlement from the school and instead are suing them for negligence on behalf of their son's death. Yeah. It's totally fair. Yeah, totally. So, so Marcos's family is like, we didn't know that the school is doing this because we are suing them. So we want you to prove it, Keith. Mm-hmm. And Keith is like, I will look into it because Keith is not here to tell you what you want to hear. Mm-mm. He's here to find the truth. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like a good gumshoe. Um. Yeah, it's just, just what a mess. Like how gross too. Like yeah. that someone's doing that. Totally. Yeah, it's the, the, the literal worst form of harassment. Um. But we'll go on. We'll carry mm-hmm. on into yeah. why the why. Exactly. We'll circle back around. <clears throat> but first, we find out that, um, we look into our plastic surgeon. Yeah. Um, what was his name? Mr. Uh, Dr. Griffiths. Doc- <laughs> Dr. <Doctor>. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always call my doctors. Is it okay, Dr. Levy, to call you Mr. Levy? Yeah. It's, <laughs> um, he has a record for like a, a botched surgery, basically like on his record, right? It's like something that's like, like a, a red stain, if you will, on his record. Uh, yeah, there was like a court case. Yeah, and so Veronica is like, it was on a man. It was about a man called Frank Boyd. Mm -hmm. So I shall go find this Frank Boyd and um, ask him about his botched surgery so that I, like, under the guise that I am getting plastic surgery. Right. Uh, Danny Boyd. Danny Boyd. Really? Mm -hmm. I wrote down Frank. So maybe Danny knows, because Danny Boyd is the person we run into. That we meet at the door? Yeah. Oh. I swear I wrote Frank. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I know we can call him Frank from here on out. It might be a little confusing. 
the character of Danny will now be played by Frank Boyd. Why? <laughs> Just like it better. Well, Danny also is another nail on the head for like Irish. Good Irish boy. Oh, Danny boy, good... Danny boy. <laughs> Just put a D on the end of it. The pipes, the pipes. Um, oh. Yeah, my friend growing up, Danny fucking hated that song. Really? Yeah, because every time people go, oh, Danny, Danny boy, and you'd be like, oh, God damn it. But it's fun. We used to always sing the Davy Crockett song at my brother. <laughs> <laughs> that's much more fun. <laughs> and I think that's strictly limited to your family. My grandfather used to sing it at him. <laughs> right. Everyone Just, had a nickname. I Everyone thought... had like a fun little nickname. Like my grandpa was like Davy Crockett. I know, but like I'm not saying like just people off the street go, oh, hey, David, hey. Davy Crockett. <laughs> I mean, it was Hanford, so yeah, because wow. they were family. <laughs> okay, that's true. Fair point. Um, or yeah, like my my mom, her name is Cecilia, and mm-hmm. all my cousins called her TC. So my grandpa would call her T Seal. <laughs> Baby. Um, Megan, Maggie Mo, you know, everyone had one. Um, I think some of the boys were, you know, like Stretchy McGee, like when because they got tall or like you know, something like that. Old stretch. Not me, I was shit McGurk. That's like the best one. <laughs> but why? <laughs> Baby, end of the line. They just gave up. Um But anyway, enough about my weird portuguese catholics and back to the irish catholics the Mm -hmm. fitzpatrick's um so veronica goes up to danny at his door Mm -hmm. and is like hey like i'm gonna go see this plastic surgeon like i saw that like there was like a like a court case on his record like or settlement like what happened like was it like your face or whatever yeah so a couple things i feel here Uh uh-huh um i mean veronica usually always goes into these things half-baked Mm-hmm. I feel like this one's especially tangential. Like, did you look up the person's, like, court cases? Is that, like, publicly available for, like, people to find? Yeah. All right. Most court cases are public record after a certain point. Gotcha. Would you do that for doctors? If you were going to get plastic surgery, bro. I mean, like, you had the money and the time. I guess so. I don't know because, I, I mean, I could, I think especially if it's, like, plastic surgery. Because it's, like, okay, like, if you have a court case for a botched surgery... Like, what went wrong? Right. Because, like, this is someone who cares about aesthetics going to a doctor to fix their aesthetics. Mm-hmm. True. So if they have, like, they're like, I, I I looked like a toad by the end. <laughs> like, you're like, well, shit. Yeah. Well, Successful like, surgery. That's what I was I was going for. for a lemur. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I don't know what's happening in my brain. One of these is a not oh my God. Mr. Toad. I do want to be Zaboomafoo. Mm. I loved Zabu. I know you do. I mean, we call him Zabu, and we call him by his nickname. Right, exactly. Behind, I I know, I heard about your family. The Kratz brothers are Zabu! (laughs) They're close family friends in our minds. (laughs) (laughs) They're my mom's internet friends, you know? Oh. Um, But, so, he's like, yeah, let me me show you what happened and why, why I had to have him patch me up he's like there was like a little thing and like he helped take care of it and then yeah. like someone called the cops or whatever you know whatever yeah so, um so but, he, but yeah but first tells her like hey follow me and i'll show you yeah he's like bar. i'm gonna show you where this happened where this thing happened for why i had the thing and then i'll show you what the thing is yeah and number mm-hmm. one from the jump this is 100 percent the sketchiest person that we have run across on the show really yeah. he doesn't scare me it's and they make i think a point of like the other guy being with this guy's just dumb no, oh, no, I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Oh, I think he's just taking her back there. No, it seemed like, oh, I'm going to take you back. I don't think he knows that she's Veronica Mars, but I think he knows that he's bringing her back into that situation. So like, oh, oh yeah, we're just going to tee you up. No, I thought it was just because he was like, oh, she's cute. Oh, um, I think anyway, like even if he did just think she was cute, he's bringing her back into an intentionally dangerous scenario. Well, I mean, they live in an intentionally dangerous scenario. So, like, I I think it's, I don't think it's intentional. Oh, I 100% thought it was. Because just the look on his face, even when things start to, like, when it's revealed that she is Veronica Morris, like, it doesn't change. Well, He's still, like, like smiling, like, happy that they're going to, like, do violence. Yeah, I don't think he cares about her. But I don't think he was doing no. it on purpose. Does that oh, make sense? Yeah, I, I read it that he totally was. He, from the jump, he's 
already like not getting rattled by the way she's like trying to interact with him and she is so that's why i read it that way because he's like he's like intentionally trying to make her feel scared and like is not like yeah but i always usually thought... like 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 manipulated by what she usually like her usual stick see i thought it was more of like a um he it's like how he wants to show off as being impressive mm. Like, oh, look what happened to me. Look what I did. Mm-hmm. Um, but regardless. Yeah. I So the reason I say, oh, and then another reason on that, actually, um, is because she asked about Dr. Griffith specifically. Mm-hmm. So then I think that already sets off, like, red flags in his head. He's like, yeah, we'll go bring it back. You'll go meet my brother, too. Because, like, whoever's asking about Dr. Griffiths, he's a member of the family, as you find out, kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, so I think that's another thing. He's like, oh, yeah, we're going to bring you back here. And my brother will deal with you, whoever you are asking about Dr. Griffiths. Interesting. I didn't read it that way at all. Um, But so he takes her back to show her where his blood is on the table. Mm-hmm. So and that's like why, too, because I'm like, he's he takes her through the narrative of like what happened to him. Yeah. I to, think it's to, just to sound impressive. I think it's to scare her. Well, I think it's to scare her, but not in like that, like. I'm going to hurt you way and like that like aren't you like impressed mm-hmm. by me way like I think it's like a it's like a peacocking tactic I think it I still think it's a, a threatening one specifically around that she asked about Dr. Griffiths mm. and is talking to him <clears throat> well because he's I, I he's a fighting Fitzpatrick so like he's like already like hmm why are you asking about this guy who's like involved in our drug business because she's getting plastic surgery the good doctor yeah, but I think he's already like, hmm. Um, but so he, she walks right into the river sticks with him and he shows her where he's been cut over and on the table. And the guy's like, what? He's, he calls his brother over to help him tell the story. And the brother's like, what's her name? And he says her name, the na- fake name she gave. Tracy That's the or other something. reason why. Because I'm like, eh, I don't think, yeah. Well, I don't think they know that she's Veronica Mars until the... Um niece whoever the, yeah and the then girl is. some blonde girl who i'm like honey like you should be at home like you should I, even if this is your family you shouldn't be around them right um bad scenario all around she's playing pool at the pool table behind them and she's like that's veronica mars she goes to my school and i'm like does everyone know veronica and also then why didn't veronica recognize this girl i think um I wrote down, I'm like, I feel like spotting her in the wild with other teenagers would totally happen because I bet she's a source of rumors at the very least. Mm -hmm. Veronica Mars helped me do this. Veronica Mars did this. Did you know Veronica Mars almost got killed? Veronica Mars, like, Mm -hmm. there's so many things happening around there that especially, like, just thinking back to my high school, like, there were people I didn't know that I knew because of rumors. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, once again, very small, very small town. Mm -hmm. There are people I knew that I didn't want to know. Yeah, totally. I completely understand that. Um, But yeah, there's, you know, high school sucks. (laughs) So (laughs) rumors getting spread around um, is an easy way to identify someone. Well, I still don't think, I think um, he just took her back there to show his blood. Um, But once the brother's like, oh, that's Veronica Mm -hmm. Mars, I think then he's like, ah, you betrayed me. Like, I don't give a fuck what happens to you. Like, I don't think he has any loyalty. So it doesn't. Yeah. I I still think, like, just because of her specific line of questioning, he's like, all right, let's go sort you out in the back. I think you're wrong. Okay. Um, I I know I'm I'm right, Your Honor. (laughs) I'm done with this argument, and I'd like to move on. Okay. No, I was just teasing. (laughs) You look so scared. Um... But um, so they're like, yeah, they tell her that they call him the good doctor, mm-hmm. um, which is so. I mean, I guess because he's getting them drugs, but I'm like, it's like, you know, like very on the nose here. Yeah, totally. Very on the nose. Mm-hmm. Um, And. Is outed by her classmate who plays pool there because she's related. um, And then gets grabbed by. Frank, <laughs> what's I think it might be right there. God, what is the other Boyd's? Um, he gets grabbed by the one that took her back there, so Danny. Ye- but I still think it's Frank. Um, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I don't remember who the other what uh, the other's name is. And then, um, um, 
she's like kind of fighting them off and you know she tases the one that's holding her and then the other one tries to tattoo a clover on her face yeah. and logan comes in with a gun mm-hmm. um and so they let her go and i'm like who um, if you're running a drug gang and you don't have your own guns Yeah. <laughs> it seemed like a bad move. Like, I feel like in the real world, they would have just gotten shot because, like, Logan and Veronica, because mm. I think the Fitzpatricks right. would have had guns. Yeah, maybe it was behind the bar or something. It wasn't accessible to them. Maybe they left them at home that day. <laughs> You know what? My my gun just like he really wanted to stay home today, so I let him. Okay, let's see. Before I leave the house, phone, wallet, keys. Damn it! Where's my gun? Uh, I think the kid took it. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is why I'm very pro gun control. Uh huh. Um, and Logan comes in and he says my favorite line, which is, "I've had a very bad year." Uh huh. <laughs> Understatement of the century. And um, they let Veronica go, and um. Then she gets in the car with Logan and she's crying and he's like, it's okay, you're okay. And she's like, Logan, you're going to get yourself killed walking around with a gun. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. Dick Sr. gave me a gun. Exactly. He's like, Dick Sr. gave it to me considering my whole my whole situation. And I'm like, mm-hmm. ah, yes, the man who was embezzling money from his own company. Uh-huh. And whose uh, wife you're currently seeing. Um. Yeah. I'm like, oh, interesting. Yes, great person to, to take advice from. Um, yeah, so then Veronica gets, she she gets out of the car and goes into Mars Investigations with Dad. And Dad's like, hey, did you know Marcos? Right? Yeah. Um, and Veronica's crying. And he's like, you good? And she's like, yeah, just a tough day. And I'm like. <laughs> Don't want to ask what the tough day was. <laughs> yeah, like, what could- <laughs> This nope, is, we'll leave it at that. This is some fathering, like stereotypical dad parenting, if I've I ever know. seen it. <laughs> From someone who is not usually like that. Exactly. I'm just like, what? <laughs> no, no, no. I bet she's fine. She had a bad day. Let's, yep, let's move just, on. She just got feelings. She it's had fine. a bad day. She had a bad day. Yep. Even though, like, if you look at the trajectory of your daughter's bad days, they're usually pretty damn bad. And she doesn't usually cry. Uh-huh. Like, I don't, whatever. Uh, it must be Wednesday. She cries. Mm hmm. Um, and he's like, well, they, we've, they've, the Oliveris found an MP3 player under their car. Mm-hmm. And so, um, do you want to do a little poking around at school and see what you can find? Yeah. Cause it was paid for by the school district. Yeah. It was a school district MP3 player. Mm-hmm. Um, so Veronica is like, Hey, vice principal, favorite character by far. Yeah. He's great. Um, like, what can you say about this mm-hmm. whole lawsuit? And he's like, nothing, because I'm the vice principal. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, so you're saying I need to talk to the principal? And he's like, yes, I, I am saying that. Like, I can't say anything. Uh huh. And then uh, when we go to the principal's office, it's like, is this the first time we've seen the principal? I think so. <laughs> um, and she's like, yeah, like, I just want to interview you about this and settlement and all that for the, the newspaper. And then she's like, but, like, you do know, like, the an mp3 player with a recording of marcos's voice was like bought by the school district and it is was like plotted or planted in the oliveris's car um and he's like you'll have to talk to our lawyer (laughs) (laughs) and i'm like imagine like looking at a high schooler and being like you know what talk to my lawyer talk to our lawyer (laughs) and she's like oh you guys went for the nice lawyer like the expensive one he's like we take this very seriously right and I'm like, mm-hmm. Yep, doing yourself no favors here. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you take not getting sued very seriously. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we really want to help these parents grieve at a much lower price point. Yep. Um. And so then Veronica's like, hey, Mac. Mac attack! I would love to know if there's a way to find out where these recordings are coming from. Yes. And she also asked, Mac, what will it take you to get on the show more often? Uh-huh. She's like, I don't know. Take it up with Rob. And because uh, Mac is by far the best character. I know. And Mac. Criminal. Is like, yeah. And she, so she also tells Veronica that the voice on the recording is. Uh, 
Captain Crunk and uh, who's the other one? Mm. Crap. Butters, well, but not. Yeah, I almost said Furious Frank, but I know that's not true either. It's not. Frank on the brain. Um, just Frank. <laughs> yeah. But they do a pirate radio show with uh, that is nautical themed called Ahoy Mateys. Uh-huh. And they talk shit on people. Yep. They didn't want to get on it. And Mac was like, yep, there's a little bit of humor for everyone. There's mm-hmm. some, some fart jokes, some sexism, yeah. some highbrow shit, some anti o er You name it, we got it. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And Max, like, Captain Crunk really elevates the comedy piece of it. Right, because it's still going, even though Captain Crunk's no longer on the show. Yes. Um, uh, which is, uh, you know, I understand. And so um, Mac is like, well, so Veronica's like, can you help me find out where they're recording from? And Mac's like, it's going to cost you mm-hmm. some some nice tools from Radio Shack. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, bitch, you know your worth. Ask for money. Exactly. Good. That top tier shit down at Radio Shack. Well, but also like as someone who focuses on career coaching and mm-hmm. life coaching and convincing people that they're worthy of themselves and money and all of the good things. I'm like, yes, bitch, ask for what you're worth. Mac is a great example because even our first introduction to her, um, we see by the end of that episode, she does know how much she's worth and she bought that bug. Yeah. Right? Fucking, she's driving a bug. Yeah, she's yeah. buying a green, a lime green bug. Yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, you know what? I'm like, you get it, girl. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, I did want to mention R.I.P. Radio Shack. We miss you every day. Do we? No. Okay. I went into a Radio Shack maybe once as a child. We were a Best Buy or a Circuit City family. I like I, they're all the same yeah, in my no. mind. <laughs> It'd be like if you're like, did you walk into a number one fan sports store or a sports authority or a big five or whatever the fuck they are? I don't There's even a know. There's a place called number one fans? I don't know. I feel like there is. Oh, you know okay. what I'm talking about? Like those stores that were literally just like selling jerseys. Mm-hmm. Like I think fans it was called corner. fans only. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. No OnlyFans. <laughs> Only, damn it. <laughs> <sighs> ah, fuck. <laughs> Can I get another five minutes on my open mic? Mm, sorry, you, you really blew it. Yep. Yeah, we get a new crowd in here. Um, much like the Fighting Fitzpatrick's, I think you're wrong. <laughs> um, Please, dear listener, don't let that slip up. Um, uh, make my argument any less convincing <laughs> um i think it just shows that people can watch the same thing and have different perspectives yeah totally um and um that i'm correct um but anyway um <laughs> duncan <you. laughs> i just kidding i don't know you're probably right it was written by a white dude <laughs> your perspective is oh, probably good. closer not like a that wasn't like a a drag per se just like you know like the way you view the world is probably more similar um but duncan's ignoring veronica yeah i i wrote down i'm like how long do you think how many days do you think it took for veronica to notice it's like well he usually doesn't talk to me three days out of the week but now it's been four or five yeah and then um um while she's thinking about that our lovely friend logan comes up to her yes and is like any updates um and then it gives a great, like, help me, Mars Kenobi. Mars, mm-hmm. was that what it was? Yeah, uh, Mars One Kenobi. Mars One Kenobi, you're my only hope. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, mm, you think you could be a Carrie Fisher? I'm sorry, Logan, you grovel <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the princess Leia walked on. Mm-hmm. Not even close. You're never going to be a general. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I... Don't you're going to eat your words later? Uh-huh. Um. And then Veronica notices that Weevil is staring at her Uh from across the hall. And she goes over and he's like, you should be nicer to me, basically. And I wrote down, yes, you should. Um, And she was like, hey, I found out that the, the guy who called in, the witness who saw Felix get murdered on the bridge is paid for by the Fitzpatricks. So I would love to know how you they're scratching your back if you're scratching theirs. Mm-hmm. And um, Weevil's like, hmm. And so then Weevil calls his boys together. 
later yep. that evening. Uh huh. They get and a he, nice crew together. Everybody's wearing their uh, their their crew colors, wearing their leather jackets and their black shirts. And he's like, yeah, for a gang, they like don't affiliate with anything. No, uh, they they're a motorcycle club. Exactly. Uh-huh. And they they just don't have the money to be able to afford a nice design. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. You know. Um, unlike the Southside Serpents. Oh, exactly. Embroider everything. Uh-huh. Um, so Weevil's like, okay, I've had a O-Niner ask me for coke this week. I've had a little birdie say the witness for the Eccles case is a Fitzpatrick. Did you all lie to me? Am mm-hmm. I still in charge? Um, did you guys actually, like, what, like, what's going on? And then one guy comes up to him after everyone leaves. And he's like, you know, man, we we didn't want to tell you the truth because we didn't want you to have to lie. Mm-hmm. And Weevil's like, I'm going to find the truth. I'm going to find it. Yep, and we know he's going to. We do. You don't, you don't fuck with Weevil. You, excuse me, miss. he's the leader of your group and you're going to quote unquote protect him? Uh-huh. I don't believe it for one second. I don't either. Um... So then we get some spy shenanigans. I love it. Yeah, I know. More spy shenanigans. Imagine if we had this back and forth more throughout the show. I'd be so happy. You mean a Mac and Veronica back and forth? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. It almost makes it feel better that Wallace isn't here. It does. It does. It alleviates the, the pain. Um, <laughs> did you forget about Wallace for a little bit? Or I no? did. Mm-hmm. Wow. It was nice. I'm yeah, sorry I brought him much back like, up. Exactly. Much like Veronica. I mean, he's not responding to my emails either. <laughs> yeah, we need to talk about that when we're done. Dicks. <laughs> well, I mean, you talk to Percy. He won't, yeah, I think he blocked me. Exactly. We got a letter. We'll, we'll read it later. Oh, I see. Off air. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's in my drawer. <laughs> I thought you would go snooping, so I put it in the medicine <laughs> cabinet. <laughs> Reaching for toothpaste, got a letter. Um, it's a season assist for using his name. Um, <laughs> but so they find out that the house where the radio transmissions for Captain Crunk's spinoff show of the other guy. <laughs> oh, <remember>. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Crunk was Oliveris. <laughs> Yeah, 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 the other guy, the guy that was with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying, the spinoff show for the other guy, because I can't remember his name. Yeah, uh, Furious Frank. Is it? No, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's some other nautical-themed one. <laughs> is it? It's got to be. First Mate Frank? Yeah. Oh, there you go. I like that. Um, <laughs> and they go to go, um, go, to go knock on the door. Of the house where the radio transmission is coming from. And who opens it but our beloved vice principal. Oh, yes. And Clemen- Clemens? Clemens. Clemens, yeah. Um, and um, Veronica's like, hey, um, my my friend Mac and I here, vice principal Clemens, we, um, Mac just, like, she, she was wondering what Vincent, that's yes. Butter's real name, uh-huh. um, was doing. And we just like wanted to stop by and say hi. And Vice Principal Clemens is like, "Oh, thank God! Yeah. Like this girl seems nice, and she likes my son." Uh huh. Yep. Super dad moment of just like, well, I mean, you know, you can call her, but like, just come in, just come yeah, in. Yeah, like you next time. Like I'd appreciate it if you called next time, but like, why don't why don't I take you back to Vincent's room? Right. Practically tripping over trying to let them in the door. Or their garage. It's like their backyard studio thing. Yeah, it looks like a um like a like a big shed almost that they've like converted into um this like space for him. In our house, that would be the home gym. Right. But well, that's where I'm. Where am I going to paint my figurines? When I take up the hobby of painting figurines again. <laughs> oh, then I'll just have the gym in the house. It's fine. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you can go sit in the garage. Yes. <laughs> painting my figurines. <laughs> I just imagine, like, you, but, like... You know, like ten years from now, with like maybe like a couple gray hairs and like some glasses some and maybe stubble. like some stubble, yeah. just like sitting in a dark room, like painting. <laughs> yeah, no lights. With like a little 
old Herman laying in a bed next to you out there. <laughs> and all the like, kids being like, where's dad? Yeah. And I'm like, he's out in the garage. Him and Herman are out there painting their figurines. Right. And they're and like, I just want to feed Herman. Do you hear the grunting noises? He's like, we can't figure out what the different <laughs> colors are in the dark. <laughs> you know you can't he tell the difference between green and forest green. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. What's the difference? Oh, damn it. That's not the green I wanted. Um, but anyway, um, enough about your beautiful feature that I'm so excited to witness. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, take up Warhammers again. I can't Most wait. Most expensive goddamn hobby in the world. <laughs> well, it's okay. You know, we'll be up upper middle class. Oh, perfect. Good, good, good. Um, You know, um, maybe we'll be like Kane family rich. Do you want to invent Ooh, streaming? That everybody's going to get billionaire around us. Yeah, <laughs> you I'm invent in- streaming. <laughs> Can you invent streaming I'm going to pitch to people. Guys, I've got something for you. It's called, wait a minute, streaming. <laughs> we need a different word for it. Like, wh- Streamline streaming. Ooh. What does that mean? We're taking all the chuff off of streaming. You know, what you'll do is you'll invent the company that bundles the streaming services, that oh, reinvents cable. <laughs> yes, there you go. Guys, come on. Can we reinvent cable? It's going to happen. Yeah, I know, but shouldn't we get on the forefront of that? I guess so. If we really want to be that evil, is it evil? In an in like an annoyance way, yes. To like only having to pay one bill versus having to, it's like consolidating your loans. Like, right. is it? But you know what's going to happen is we're going to have it's going to be a bundle of different things, but then at the same time it's going to be different price points, and then we're not going to sell them separately, and they're all going to be part of this a la carte package. And it's like, well, damn it, I only wanted the HBO Go, I didn't need the goddamn Hulu. Well, I think what will prevent that is that um, companies like HBO and Hulu and all of them like owning access so if anything it would just be a bundled discount service hmm. kind of like, like how they do like the hulu disney, disney yeah. yeah um just my thoughts you know forecasting we'll check back in on this in a couple of years and we can relive how um how much how money we, we're making how we thought this would play out mm-hmm. perfect um it'll be great i'm gonna invent actually instead toilet paper too <laughs> This, uh, yeah, the new version of toilet paper. What's different? I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Only got the, I'm in the concept stage. <laughs> How many plies will it be? <sighs> you just wait. <laughs> We're going up to thread counts at this point. <laughs> Brinton is a staunchly two ply or yeah, or, or better. Else you just might as well go to the Home Depot and get yourself sandpaper. <laughs> not even true but you'll sleep in sheets if you like sandpaper <laughs> i'm not wiping my butt with them <laughs> oh my god you're so much drama i love you um I love you too i was gonna say gonna... <laughs> i was catching my breath um it's fine like you don't have to love me um, I, do love you. I was a little you know i was a little mean to you earlier it's fine. <laughs> um but anyway so the vice principal Clemens knocks on the door and he's like, Vincent, you have friends over. And he's like, tell them I'm not here. And he's like, they can hear you <laughs> They're right outside the door. And so he opens it and Veronica's like, hey, Vincent, how are you? And shoves her way in. And I'm like, I love this bitch. Uh, this is a great move. Great it's move the energy. Every time she does it. Yeah, that I'm like, I, I just I love I want to be it. I mm-hmm. want to embody it. Yeah, me just too. Like, Hello, I take up space. Yep. I'm here. Damn it. Yeah. Um, hello. <laughs> um, and, and Butters is like, um, why are you guys here? Like, I'm just painting my action figures. And then um, they walk to the other side of the shed. And um, Matt goes, Butters, your blankie is blinking. Because he'd covered. And she's like, it's weird because there was music playing on the radio. And now it is quiet. Mm-hmm. Almost like maybe someone turned it off. Right. And rather than transition to a new record, he just shuts it off. Yeah, I don't understand that either. I know. My OCD was like, just put on another record. Yeah. Get back Cover. to Cover. Exactly. Uh, but so then um, they get the story from him and he's like, yeah, so Marcos and I used to do this together. Um, but then he went to camp and he came back all weird and quit the show. And um, that was before the bus crash. And then his... Um, he died so then you know like we never really we never really talked about it yeah 
Um, and so poor dude losing his friend. Yeah, poor butters. Um, and so Veronica's like, mm, he went to summer camp. Let's look into that. Mm-hmm. And she does, and finds out that it is a conversion therapy summer camp. Yeah, self quest. Uh huh. I never understand how that stuff can be real or not real. Um, legal. Yeah. Yeah. Legal. Yeah. I can understand fully that it's real. Um, it's, it's the legal part. Well, because it's like, it's almost targeted in the same way that like deprogramming is, where it's yeah. like, it's a good thing. I remember talks when you're younger in like high school, like kids sending their kids away, not for conversion camp, but like rehab and stuff. And I think there's like all kinds of abuses that have it in those kind of camps. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you have a whole bunch of kids that are really f- angry. Because 100%. they're being told that who they are isn't okay. Yeah. And that's fucked up. Totally. And they're also 100% cut off from everybody else. Yeah. And it's similar. Um, I'm sure there's pieces of it that it's like, yeah, like, you know, like, you don't want to, you don't want to get in trouble for being who you are or like get caught for breaking a rule yeah. you know like everyone's tattling on everyone because it's like that like that fear that you're not enough makes people competitive and feel like they feel scarcity mm-hmm. and it's just it's sad it is it's really sad it's fucked up yeah it's absolutely awful um and it's interesting that this uh, they they featured that in an episode from what was it like 2005 2006 yeah, 2005. I'm like, oh, nice yeah <laughs> Um, and so then Keith is talking to Marcos's dad mm-hmm. and, um, he's like, yeah, I had Veronica do a little poking around at school and he's like, this isn't like some kids thing. Like this is like adults and yeah. Veronica's like, kids are mean. Exactly. Also like, look how smart I am. Like I'll fuck you up. <laughs> uh, well, that's what I would have said. And yeah. That hey, is- Mr. Oliveris, want to catch these hands? <laughs> And I do it again. <laughs> um, so in other words, he's an awful dad. But he's like, my wife and I go bowling tonight. Mm-hmm. So Keith is like, I'm going to do a stakeout at your house to see if whoever's breaking in to leave the stuff comes in while I'm there yep. and does the things. So Keith is staking out the house and the neighbor comes in. Yep. Mr. Stumblebum. He and Keith pins him down on the table and then he's like yeah like i like i knew the alarm code he's like yeah i'm here because which how is keith in the house with the alarm set maybe it's not motion maybe it's just door based yeah huh i don't know how home security systems work so yeah your guess is as good as mine yeah i don't either i mean i guess it could just be based on the door and not on um yeah motion yeah because the one uh um my work was always motion based. Mm, okay. The one that I used to have to set off. Maybe, maybe at a, if you have a home one, especially if you have potentially have animals, which they don't. Um, mm. But maybe animals could cause a. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, maybe it's just door based. Yeah. But regardless, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, he's like, oh, he's like, no, I'm just the neighbor. I keep my beer here because my wife doesn't want me to have beer in the house. And I'm like, sounds like you need to talk to your wife. Uh-huh. Sounds like you, um, yeah, you've got a lot to sort out there, bud. You might have a touch of the the alcoholism or maybe mm-hmm. you just, you know, aren't a fun drunk. <laughs> yeah. Some people just aren't fun drunks, you know? Uh-huh. Totally. I, I myself have been included in that club from time <laughs> to time. Yeah, exactly. It happens to all of us. Um, you know? So COVID must be hitting him hard. Yeah. Can't go to the Just let me come over. (laughs) I was quarantined at your house. Uh Um But so then after the man leaves, Keith notices that there's a bus in the fish tank. Mm -hmm. And there's a note on the back of the the letterhead for the legal team. Yeah. That has the alarm code. And there's fish food in the fish tank. Yep. Yeah, as soon as you see it in the fish tank, you're just like, oh, on the nose mm-hmm. um like way too obvious because mm-hmm. if keith was there the whole time when would someone have been able to sneak in mm-hmm. so yeah ridiculous and so keith calls him and he's like hey um mr Oliveris, your neighbor keeps beer in your fridge and he's like yeah okay cool 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 yeah. like 
he's like also i found another note and another bus like yeah like let's let's talk about that later which i like Mm -hmm. he's like we're gonna do this in person right before the the deposition Mm -hmm. so then um right before the deposition they meet Mm -hmm. and keith is like hey you know i don't know what's happened in the past but i do think in this particular instance you were planting evidence yep he's like hey it might have started out i don't know who did it to begin with um but uh you know and i feel bad but this is not the way to go and you don't want me testifying for you Mm -hmm. and yeah so then um um logan gets kidnapped yep by weevil's gang yes um logan uh what makes you think that the white van the the plain white van with no windows uh blocking your car is uh, a good van to approach um as a woman i would have not gone near my car yeah because i have been taught that someone is always trying to steal me mm-hmm. from the day i was born someone popped out and they were like someone's gonna try to kidnap you you better be ready and i right. was like duck and roll bitches uh-huh i got this <laughs> Carry my keys between my two little baby fingers. How to punch out a tail light. I got my brass knuckles on my little baby hand. Yeah. Those you know. were the cutest brass knuckles I've ever seen. I know. We have them in the baby book. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you imagine? I feel like baby me would like yeah. look cute with brass knuckles. Oh, look at that. Uh-huh. Great. This is when you punch the, the girl at your daycare. Oh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't go to daycare. Yeah, I know. I was at my grandmother's house. <laughs> Um, but yeah, also it's blocking his car in like, yeah. come on, red flag here, bud. But yeah. And get in from the passenger side. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> have you learned nothing? But yeah, like where you, you're not going to be able to go anywhere. Like, no, bail, yeah. bail. Yeah. Go, 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 but, go. But no, he's like danger. Let me uh, come knock on the door. Well, because he doesn't care. Yeah, that's true. And so then Very true. he gets kidnapped by Weasel, Weevil's gang and they play this weird game of Russian roulette where they're like, we're putting you on trial. Did you do this? Did uh-huh. you do that? Yep. Do you know this? In a warehouse with giant fans. Uh-huh. I mean, at least they had good air circulation. Exactly. Uh-huh. I feel like that's a staple in movies and I never understand why. Like how many like warehouses have these giant ass fans, but maybe they do. I think maybe warehouses that don't have air conditioning have to have them because it is a mm. health code violation if right. you don't have like a certain temperature you know yeah, what i mean that's probably true um, well it is it's like a like you have to provide if the heat gets over oh. a certain level you have to provide cooling spots and shade right. and mm-hmm. um but yeah yeah so i maybe they're just already there when they film <laughs> right, like, exactly well, here we go well fuck we're not gonna move these yeah just turn them on a little bit and they're gonna slowly rotate in the back um it'll keep the keep the cast cool oh yeah you know, Logan's yeah. getting hot there. He's sweaty. It's exactly. Good. I hope. I bet they can sit on that set, unlike, uh, you know, Christopher Nolan. Did you hear about that? No. Uh, Anne Hathaway in an interview is like, yeah, uh, Christopher Nolan doesn't keep chairs on set because um, if people are sitting, they aren't working. So then people were like, what the fuck? Is, like, that's bananas. But then people that, like, were on his crew, it's just like, no, there's there's chairs on set. Like, it's just like usually the cast doesn't, so they're like, it's not it's like a status thing so they don't get like special seats in comparison to the production team (laughs) so it caused a big like flurry of like people being like excuse me like that's a union job (laughs) yeah yeah it's just like oh like the cast doesn't have like their special like like this is Anne hathaway's chair exactly her name embroidered on Uh it yeah when she was saying there's no chairs it's like for the cast Mm -hmm. not for the staff Mm -hmm. um but um so then logan gets thrown in a ditch yep and he calls weevil yeah did he grab their phone i'm assuming that's what that was did he grabbed one of their phones oh because when weevil calls he's asking is it done and then he's surprised that logan's on the phone it's very confusing i this thought logan assumption. called weevil did he and he's like is it done Maybe that's what happened. I was confused. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I was. And then I was like, are Logan and Weevil in this together? See, that's what I thought, too. But then he's like, you have no idea that what what you've you've... done. Uh Uh-huh. So then I was like, wait, did he grab a phone on his way out? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, But um, 
Then we go back to school. And Veronica goes to bother Butters. Yeah. And he goes, can't you graduate already? <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> she's like, same bitch. Like, yeah. she's, she has, it's kind of like Harry Potter where it's like, God, like, this kid just keeps showing up and making the year weird. Like, can't uh-huh. we just not? Yeah. I mean, Butters uh, categorically, categorically sucks. But um, this is a very good line. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and um, then she is like, Butters, like was um marcos gay and he was like he wasn't gay he talked about girls all the time and it's like <laughs> yep definitely like that's definitely yeah uh-huh um and so then veronica was like let's find out who liked butters and so she posts like a what is it like a free yeah, so she emails back the email we didn't talk about this yeah uh, the email at the beginning of the episode that had reached out of being like hey you know, I knew um, Marcos, but like, you know, he was he was a good good kid kind of thing. But like, uh-huh. I can't talk more because I have like about him because my jealous boyfriend knows I had a crush on him. Mm. And so she emails that email back, being like, "Hey, we've got this like special like free thing. I forget what it is. Uh, for pirate radio or something mm-hmm. like that." Um, and then the person calls, and then Veronica picks up, and I think the person recognizes who the person is on the end of the phone, so hangs up. Yeah. And um, so then um, Veronica and Mac track the call, because mm-hmm. that's what Mac is here for. Yeah. Um, and we find out. We go to this house, and at first we think it's this one girl, and then we find out it's her brother. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ryan. Yeah, who we had met very briefly at the beginning of the episode. And Ryan liked Marcos. Um, and was trying to help Marcos embody who he was, and yeah, who had a he big... liked, and but he had a really big crush on him. So there's a lot of like self-serving actions and how he went about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like, yeah, I used to come over and hang out with Marcos, and then like one day his parents came home. Well, I was giving him a back rub, and we were sh- he was shirtless, and so his parents freaked out. Um, and so then he was sent to his conversion therapy camp and then um then his parent he came back and he like wanted nothing to do with ryan and his parents made him do like quote unquote normal kid things so like that's why he went on the field trip to the baseball field Mm -hmm. and so because of that his parents he this kid ryan blames marcos's parents for marcos dying um because he wouldn't have been on the bus and so he has been the one who has been planting the CDs or the tapes and the buses prior to that last one that was done by Mr. Oliveris trying to frame the school district. Mm-hmm. And she's like, hey, Ryan, those pranks were mean. And she's like, he's like, good. They were mean to Marcos. Yeah. And I was like, mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like, I'm not really the like Batman take justice into your own hand type, but like, I totally. get it. Yeah, exactly. No you tea, no shade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, completely get it. And so then... <sighs> We go to Duncan, Mm -hmm. dreaming of Meg in bed with him. Yes. Well, at first we think it's Veronica, Uh and then we're like, oh, it's Meg. Right. Um, Because he likes blonde, skinny women. Uh Uh-huh. As did everyone in the early 2000s. (laughs) Blonde, Blonde, skinny women. Blonde, Scandinavian women. Um, And um, she... She's like, are you going to help me or not in the dream? Like, basically, like, you're the only one who can help me. So then he goes, he wakes up. Yep. <gasps> and he goes and opens the letter in the drawer. Mm-hmm. And he goes, oh, my God. Credits. <gasps> Finn. Yeah. What could it be? What could it be? Yeah. Cliffhanger. Major cliffhanger. This season, though, just feels so soap opera-y. Oh, it is. To the, to the. To the nines. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I feel like it's a number. <laughs> sevens? Is yeah, it sevens? To the sevens. Crap. Um, that's a game. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I like to think that the game is called crap, <laughs> not craps. Just crap. crap. <laughs> so will I play it? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Well, shall we plug? Yes. You can find me at butreallythough.com. I post free coaching content. I can help you take control of your career, take control of your life, identify what you want and how to get it. 
and we can have fun along the way. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find me at But Really Though on YouTube where I post free coaching content as well. And from there, you can access my link tree, sign up for my newsletter, get all the content. Right. Watch Vlogmas in July. Oh, yeah. And I'm doing Vlogmas in July. And I've got a very big Vlogmas present for you all. Yeah. Check it out. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also find our other podcast, But Really Though, on all podcast platforms. And at But Really Though Pod on Twitter. Um, you can also find this. And YouTube. It, yes. Now on YouTube. Um, this podcast is also now on YouTube and all podcast platforms. Um, slowly uploading the backlog for both of those. It's going to take a few, take a while. Um, but I'll be uploading uh, new episodes as they come out. And then um, you can find this podcast on Twitter and Facebook at Mars Rewatch. And uh, if you want to write in and say something, uh, MarsRewatch at gmail.com. Yep. Yeah, I think that's it.